Hey there everybody, this is Lee with Creative Two Time Mom and today we're talking about incorporating games into your summer learning. So hello there again and welcome back to my channel. My name is Lee and this is Creative Two Time Mom. This channel is all about parenting, marriage, homeschooling, good books, and thriving in the day today. Today's video is going to be talking about incorporating game schooling into your summer learning. We are well into the summer season. The kids are out of school and I'm sure if you're like me, you are looking for ways to keep them busy but also to keep them productive. And one of the ways that I do that is by incorporating games into learning over the summer. This video is part of a collaboration that is being hosted by Mommy and Mia Homeschool Chronicles, as well as The Road Less Traveled. I will link both of their channels down below so that you can check them out. And I'm popping in here to say that this collaboration is also being hosted by Lindsay at Bites of Memory. Hope you guys enjoy this one. I gathered in front of me a group of games that I feel are valuable, productive, and sneak in some learning during the summer time. So that's what I'm gonna be sharing with you today. I'm also going to link down below the playlist so that you can check out how other homeschoolers and moms like yourself are incorporating game schooling into their summer routine. I've divided these up into some different categories and one of the first ones I want to start with is just a basic game that most of us have in our home in some variation and that is memory. We have had a lot of memory games over the years. Um, I'm looking for right now, I know we have a Toy Story set somewhere in this house and I think that my seven-year-old would love that. But the one that I could find was this Memory Challenge by Disney and it has different memory cards that you connect but you also are trying to gather the ones that are on your scorecard. So it's divided up between historical images, different parts of the park, and you get more points if you can get those particular matches. But any sort of memory game, my kids played memory a lot in the preschool years, and I'm amazed. I think it really worked their brain, really worked their logic, and their ability to retain information. So I think memory is one of those games that you really want to have in your game closet because it works for so many different things. It's fun for the kids and it's just a good classic. You can usually find it pretty inexpensive and there's so many different variations. I don't think you'll get bored of this one. The next game I have falls in line of the logic category. This is Dr. Eureka. Uh, I had this on my wish list for a really long time, but we just got it, I think, over Christmas. And you have three test tubes in the game. It's set up for four players, so each player would have three test tubes. And you have two, each player will have two green balls, two purple, and two red. Well, on the cards, you have to get them in a certain order in the test tubes. The first person to do that wins the card. First person with five cards wins the game. This has been a fun one. I was in my mind thinking preschool, early elementary, but even on up to my 13 year old, he is loving this game. He's really competitive and has a lot of fun trying to get the different combinations. You can't touch the balls. They have to go from one beaker to the next. It's sort of a combination, logic, thinking through things. So we have all had fun with this one. Even my uh, husband and my mom who purchased it, they've gotten grandma in on the fun as well. The next two games are geography style games. The first one is Flight Frenzy. It's set up a lot like uh, Spot It. And I think I've shared this one with you guys before now that I'm thinking about it, but it's the flags of the world. And what's great about this one is now we are starting to recognize the different flags in the world. On each scorecard, there is eight different flags. They are labeled with the country that they correspond with. And then you have to match them um, with the card that is on the playboard. First person to get rid of their hand of cards wins. And so I'm starting to see that we are getting a lot more familiar with flags and where they belong, different parts of the country, uh, because some of the cards are maps. You have to map, uh, match your flag with a region. So this one's been really cool. And Scrambled States of America. I think a lot of us have heard of this game before. Again, this is one that was on my wish list for a really long time, and I'm glad that I purchased it, especially with the fact that we are going to be doing U.S. Geography States and Capitals next year. This one's going to come in really handy. You match your um, states with different 
clues and the first person to finish off their hand wins. So your clue might be that the capital has so many vowels or the person with the state closest to Massachusetts or your um, it gives the nickname of the state so maybe that nickname has to fit a certain category. First person to get rid of their cards wins. The next set of games all falls in line with science concepts and the first one is a cooperative game. This is called Walk in the Woods and you have cards laid out on a playing board. Some of them are items that you're trying to gather for your basket. Some of them are hazards such as a sunburn or mosquito bites and some of them are solutions to those hazards. The goal is that you would be able to solve all the problems and gather your items without leaving any cards on the board. So if you see a solution to one of the problems, even if a different player turned over that problem, if you can offer the solution, then you clear that card from the board. The game is to all work together to clear the problems and gather your items without leaving any cards on the board. This has been a fun one, especially in the preschool years where we're still learning about losing and we're still learning about being a gracious loser. But this is also one of those games I pull out when my kids just aren't quite getting along as well as I'd like them to and I need them to do something where they're working together. So even on up through my upper elementary kids, they will still sit down and play this one. The next one is a game that I was recently reminded by of uh, the Brave Homeschooling Mama pulled this one out. She said, oh yeah, you recommended that. And I had forgotten about it, so it's been a while since we've played it. This is a game called Camp. And I think I've done a full review on this one before. If I have, I will link it down below. But it's some great information about hunting, fishing, wildlife, water safety, being safe, hiking. All those things, it also comes with extension packs that you can buy on the cards, so if you have finished all your cards, this game can be played over and over again by buying the extension trivia cards. It's a trivia game, it keeps you thinking, it has several layers of play, and it's a fun one to pull out for nature study as well. This is a game that was recommended by Shalise at Sodbuster Living. It's a Constellations memory game. Again, talking about memory, but this year in particular, we always have a component of space in our homeschool because my youngest wants to be an astronaut, and sometimes it's hard to find new space games, but I don't know constellations at all. And uh, most of my kids don't know constellations. It's not something we've spent time on. So, again, it's kind of that familiarity. You start by just making it a basic memory game, but the more you play it, the more familiar you become with the names of the, and the formations of the constellations. So, and it's really inexpensive. I think I purchased this one for nine, eight or nine dollars and it became a stocking stuffer at Christmas time. The next set of games I would put in the math category, although you may or may not agree with me, I felt like they fell in the math category. Uh, the first one is Phase 10. This is a basic card game you can pick up anywhere. I got ours at Walmart and you are working to create different sequences of numbers. If you can work through all 10 phases before anybody else, you win the game. It's similar to Uno, but a lot more in depth, working with numbers, colors, combinations, runs, sets, etc. This is a good one for camping, travel, homeschool. Of course, we gotta talk about Yahtzee. I do this one for math, subtraction, multiplication, division, it's a great one. And sequence, logic, math, card play, so many things involved in this game. You would not believe, if you can get your hands on this one, I love this one. This one's good for family game night, adult game night, we all love it. So those are some of the board games that we are incorporating in our homeschool this summer. Leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you are using as far as games, and we'll see you guys next time. Bye, guys.